What's up guys? Welcome back to the Turbo John YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about bump steer, how to get it right so that your car, if you have these long travel front struts, you can still make the wheel stay mostly straight. Let me show you how important it is. Let me show you what we got going on and what we're going to go over today. Appreciate it guys. Comment, like, and subscribe. All right, guys, we are fresh back from Las Vegas. Man, what a wild weekend. It was really, really cold. It was really, really windy. Some very long days. Lots of cars, lots of classes, lots of racing. We went out there, had to tune up in it. Didn't mess with the tune up, but you know, it's first round limited drag radial. He was faster, so we tried to go faster. Uh, Rodney went out there and it wheelied and he started pedaling the car probably just a little bit over for one second. Went a 113 60 foot and that was probably with the body or the back tire. So we were going to be on track for a 108, 109, 60 foot, which is where we were trying to be. Started pedaling the car, and that's how you get a wheelie down. You pedal it. Uh, that's the best way anyway. Or you have wheelie control, which he does not have. Uh, so you pedal it. You have to put on and off the gas. And then uh, it did end up coming down, and he was still pedaling it as it come down. So it caught the spring, and then it bounced up, done a great big wheelie down track. Uh, luckily, it didn't hurt anything, didn't get in the wall, but uh, it did find a leak when he took off from the starting line. Uh, we hadn't had any leaks all day, all weekend. Uh, everything seemed fine, but we had a puddle of fluid and it ended up being transmission fluid. Got back to the pits and it was where the yoke goes into the back of the transmission. Uh, apparently, we were going to put a seal in it uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning so he could race, but went to go pull the drive shaft out and the drive shaft would not slide into the transmission. So that means it twisted the yoke. So hopefully he'll be back out soon. But let's look at this one. Uh, appreciate him having me out. It was fun. We had a good time. Saw a lot of people that watched the channel. Appreciate everybody watching the channel. Oh, travel struts. Look how long that thing is. Uh, TRS suspension. They're awesome, man. Jeff can't thank him enough. If you need some long travel suspension or any other shocks, make sure you hit him up too. Look him up. Real good dude. Got good stuff and i mean it is long i don't know how long that shirt is it's probably nine inch shirt but we're working on it when uncle mike set up this car um you know we didn't think we were going to have to have these like all the way tilted out so we could get all the travel so you know that's the way we built it had the 75 pound landrum springs on it that's what jeff sent me when i had the small block we put it on there initially and it seemed like it was pretty good but the way the car is working the way the car is trying to lift the front end, it doesn't have enough spring, we think. So we've got 100 pound springs, got Jeff to get us some 100 pound springs. Uh, now these are AFCO springs, uh, really nice black, but these are 100 pounds, 16 inches long. These 75s were just not able to fling the front end up because the iron big block is heavy. It's about 300 pounds heavier than the small block. So that is what we're doing. We're putting the springs on it, uh, got it all together. Uh, what I did also to get the front end up higher, these are Viking, uh, start, start off as Vikings, I'm pretty sure. Um, and they screw down. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So like over here, we did not screw them all the way down. And I also, you notice how this is versus this side over here. So we're gonna have about another inch and a half of travel on this thing when we get done with it. So that's gonna work out good, I think. But while I was out here messing with it, uh, Uncle Mike, this is uh, all custom stuff, of course. Uh, the front strut stuff is all custom. But this is, in order to get this strut with this much angle, the way I've got it set up here, to get it to drop all the way down, I had to take the plate here and slide it out. And so it is gonna camber the tire in just a little bit at full travel. There's just no way you can get by it when you have this type of suspension. If you have a double A-arm suspension, then this can go through a lot of travel without you know, going in and out. But this is, I mean, it is what it is at full travel with no limiters, it's going to extend. But I want to talk a little bit about bump steer. Let me, uh, let me set my camera up real fast and then we're going to show you what this thing does when it goes through the full range of motion and how you correct it and show you exactly what bump steer is and why it's a problem. So these are the things that control the bump steer. Your lower control arm, your A-arm, or if you have a double A-arm, and your linkage, your steering linkage there. So that is how it's controlled, and it's about the relationship between the angle of this bar and the angle of the actual lower control arm. A lot of people try to get them exactly the same angle. Uh, I guess if they were technically exactly the same angle and they were the same length, 
then it should not have any bump steer ever. But that's really hard to accomplish. And the reason why is because even with this one, the length, the connection is is here, but the inner tie rod end is way in there. So, you know, they're, they're different lengths. So that's why you have to play with it. And you have to play with the bump steer kit you have to play with the, the bump steer adjustments to make it the best you can. Now, obviously, if you have like a radial car, a front side car, uh, something that has a maximum of like an inch and a half, two inches of travel, bump steer is non-existent. You can get it to where the difference between uh, ride height and the difference between full travel and nose diving when you're on the brakes and the parachute, you can get it to where it's almost non-existent. But check this out. Okay guys, so I've got this thing compressed all the way up. Extension is pretty tight. So what happens with bump steer? Okay, so say this is ride height. So you have the A-arm that is at an angle and then you have the steering rod. The steering linkage, the tie rod end that is mounted to the actual uh, spindle. And so you can't get those exactly perfect. So what happens is as this thing goes through its travel, as it goes up and down, then the angles are a little bit different. And so what happens is when the angles are a little bit different, then this one, basically it either pulls it or pushes it. In an ideal world, it would be perfectly square. So you would have no toe in or out. And so it would come up and then it would go down through its travel and it would not change. Like I said, that is very difficult to make that happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the shock down, I'm gonna release it, let it fall down and watch what this does. And it does have a little bit, it's going to. It's, it's, going to, it's impossible to make it perfect in this scenario. But the way you play with it is you with spacers and shims. And sometimes you have a lot of spacers, sometimes you have a lot of shims, some you don't, you don't have many. I have seen some cars where they take this and to get it proper, if the steering rack is higher, they'll actually put it on top of this. And from what I understand, uh, you know, as long as it is the best it can be, that's all you can do. So let me, I'm gonna loosen this up, let it start dropping. Could you see it move a little bit? Um, I couldn't, I can see it move just a tad, let's see. It is not moving much, but so, you don't ever want it to tow out. So you don't ever want it to be while you're at driving the car, racing it towed way out, uh, or you don't want it towed in. But if you have to pick between a slight tow out or a slight tow in, always pick slight tow in. If it's out, it seems like the car is kind of darty. So let's do it again. Ready? I mean, it does not move much. It does not move much at all. But this is how you can kind of tell. If this was bad, then you would you would definitely see it. But it's set, so that's why it's not that bad. So uh, once I get the other side done, um, so then we, you have to decide when you have a preference. Uh, do you want it to be uh, in or out or where at? Sometimes it's a compromise. Like sometimes riding down the at ride height, this may be a little bit towed out. And that'll wear your tires out, not real good. But when you're racing, then they're dead straight. But now you also gotta think about shutdown. So when this thing's at ride height, if it's towed perfect, but then when it slam on brakes and the parachute comes out and it goes way past ride height, if it tows way out, that's gonna be hard to drive also. So it literally, setting bump steer, uh, for me, it takes a very long time and it's constant rising up and down on on the the chassis uh, and checking it. And the only way you check it, you can buy the little plates and stuff, but basically you have to have a tape measure in the front of the wheel, the back of the wheel, and then you're just measuring the distance. And you can see it move uh, when it does. And so you just wanna make sure you check it. You wanna make sure, uh, you know, it's as close as possible to not have any. Like right now, at, at this this is gonna be about where my, my, my suspension is. I've got about an inch and a half right here on the top. So that's where my ride height is gonna be. And then basically when it goes down track, it is towing in a tad and you know, it is what it is. That's gonna be raceable uh, for me. So uh, yeah, that's, so that's it. So that's how you do bump steer. So that's what we're working on today. Uh, let's see if you can see that good.
All right, guys. Well, I hope you are having a happy Thanksgiving. Spend time with your loved ones. Spend time working on race car. Spend time thinking about how you're going to go fast next season. And we're going to try to go fast. Big or die. We'll be out next weekend. Rockingham Dragway, back at the track. We're going to try it again. I ain't going to miss no more. I know there's some, some things that we need to do to make it better. Uh, small block Chevrolet would probably be ideal, but we're going to see what we can do. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, if you are a drag racer, this is what you're going to end up with. A lot of different springs, a lot of different rates. They're not super cheap. They're not cheap by any means. The cheap, cheap ones are like $50 a piece, but the higher end ones, the longer AFCOs and the Landrums, they're $100 a piece. You'll have a small fortune in coilover springs, but it is what it is. That's what you got to have to drag race. So we've already changed the back around, so we're going to do the front around now. Check it out. Appreciate it, guys. Comment, like, and subscribe. See ya.